Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today, Monday, April 27th, 2020. I'm your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chicken Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chicken Analytics. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where we get a lot of the content for this show. Give you daily stock ideas to consider. It hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities ended higher in Friday's trading, closing near the best levels of the day. All sectors were in the green, led by technology and materials. Energy and REITs did underperform. Treasuries were a little changed to slightly stronger on the day. The dollar was weaker against the yen and the euro. Gold finished down a half of 1%. Oil closed up 2.7%, uh, but still finished the week down over 30%. You're outperforming sectors, as we said, tech materials followed by healthcare. Laggards, energy, REITs throw utilities in the mix as well. As we get to the desk this morning, uh, futures are trading higher here on a Monday morning. Uh, not, not a clear directional driver. Uh, Asian markets were higher overnight, led by Japan and Taiwan. European markets are seeing big gains as well. Treasuries are weaker across the curve. The dollar is weaker on the major crosses after a big week last week. Uh, gold is up. 30 basis points WTI crude uh, back in the downside direction, down 15 and a half percent after that big move to the downside yesterday. I guess it's a lot of the reopening headlines that are uh, giving a little bit of bid to equities here on a Monday morning. But as we dive right into it, here's what I see. Early trading pushed futures back into the resistance zone, that zone between 28.50 and uh, we'll call it 29.30 top end of the zone for now as that is the level that marks the 62% retracement of the move down from February into March. Uh, 27.50 is initial support below that 2450 to 2600 holds the key retracement levels of this advance. What's interesting to me is we've basically gone nowhere for two weeks. Uh, a lot of choppy trading in and slightly below this resistance zone, dancing with a downward sloping 50 day moving average. Uh, what that's done is that has helped to alleviate overbought conditions. If you're using that 13 day CCI with the three day EMA on it, uh, and at the same time, shaken money flow remains bullish, though is heading in the downside direction. So, choppy trade feels like to me, choppy trade with an upside bias uh, is what would hurt the most people right? There's a very bifurcated view out there. You can see it. Just pay attention to some of the commentary. Uh, the fact that the market is not cratering is angering people. Uh, that tells you that positioning is likely offsides in the bearish direction and the pain trade is likely uh, higher where going sideways for another week would probably just frustrate the most people. Uh, so choppy with an upside bias is the pain trade. In my view, it's not scientific. It's just my observations based on conversations, commentary, et cetera, that I'm paying to it, paying attention to in the marketplace. What are we writing about in our note today? Well, the two week consolidation, as I said, alleviates overbought conditions. Treasuries are consolidating in an uptrend. And that's kind of interesting to me because with the big rally in the market, treasuries haven't exactly fallen off a cliff, right? Rates aren't exactly ripping to the upside. Gold flashes a bearish divergence. We're going to wait and see if that's confirmed. Crude is off about 15%. It was 14% when I wrote this in pre-market trading. Futures point to a higher open today on the equity side. Taking a look at the major indices now from a power bar perspective. Dow adds 1.17%, 4 to 13 Power bars, S&P 500 up 1.4%, 46 to 159 bulls to bears there. NASDAQ an outperformer slightly, 21 to 25 bulls to bears. Small caps, uh, a little bit of an improvement in this ratio, 199 to 365 as they outperformed on the day. Bonds uptick, sending yields lower. Tech, you've heard me talk about tech for a long time. It's been one of my favorite groups. It's outperformed. It outperformed in, it outperformed during, and it's outperforming now. Tech, watch relative strength, folks. It's that important. According to the Chicken Power Bar, large cap stocks are more bullish. Uh, large cap stocks are more bearish than small cap stocks. Major indexes are mixed. Taking a look now at our stock of the day, and this is what I'm highlighting in my note today, because this is kind of an, this is an intriguing one to me. I see a potential personality change here in Alexion. Alexion Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol ALXN, has a very bear, bullish 
shake and power gauge rating strong trend strong industry group right i've highlighted biotech in my notes if you're reading my notes you've seen me highlight biotech uh strong industry strong trend above a trend line above the long-term trend line here shake and money flow is becoming increasingly bullish as is relative strength right so relative strength and money flow as we work off an overbought condition and work towards oversold so what do we have? We have a leading stock and a leading industry group close to oversold with bullish money flow. Uh, folks, regardless of your view on the market, that's the setup, right? And I'm showing it to you here. Here's our checklist and shake and analytics type of stock you want to own in the top here, all green. When do you want to own it? Uh, well, we've got, aside from not being quite oversold just yet, everything else kind of lines up. Alexion, ALXN, looks like a compelling name on the long side of the portfolio today. Uh, or in the coming days. I think essentially, as long as you are holding 95 to 100, uh, you want to take a look here at Alexion, ALXN, featured in my note today. Taking a look at our sector tracker now, movement in the major sectors over the last five days, energy and comms, the only two groups that are higher. Healthcare towards the top of the list, <clears throat> Alexion. Uh, discretionary tech materials uh, also outperforming. Industrials, fins, staples, utes, and reeds. Kind of interesting here, right? Because we're going to look at rates, I think, a little bit later on in the show. Um, it's interesting to me that while rates have not, you know, while bonds have not fallen off a cliff, there is there a little bit of a consolidation uh, in the treasuries, and maybe that's being foreshadowed by underperformance in the rate-sensitive groups. Staples coming off a little bit here uh, over the past week, some profit-taking in what has been a strong group. Financials just continue to be underwhelmed by what I see in the financials uh, following bank, bank earnings. So, my personal view is, um, from my work, is that the trend in treasuries to the upside remains intact. Therefore, the trend to the downside in yields remains intact. But we're not going to go there in a straight line. We'll take a little, look a little bit later on in the show. Uh, our industry in focus today, transport services. Past six months, I mean, I guess unmitigated disaster is a good way to classify it. Uh, relative to the S&P 500, down by uh, 21% on a relative basis and uh, still a very weak power bar ratio, five bulls, 16 bears. Uh, despite that uh, atrocious power bar ratio, it's actually ranked in the middle of the pack. 11 of 21 subsectors moved up one slot over the past week. Uh, names we want to avoid, Kirby KEX, very bearish. Kansas City Southern KSU, very bearish. Allegiant Travel, ALGT. Very bearish. And if we take a look at the chart here, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. It's chopping, you know, called sawtoothing higher, uh, but nowhere near keeping up with the broader market, right? So if you're paying attention to kind of Dow theory and you pay attention to what the transports are saying about the market and, and the economy, um, you know, it's bearish, right? And so at least, if, at least that's according to the transports. Bearish ETF power gauge rating for XTN, weak trend below a declining long-term trend line, chopping around the 21-day moving average. Bearish money flow, big underperformer since December, right? Breakdown ahead of the market. So we have a bearish fund underperforming bearish money flow, working towards an oversold condition. Hard for me to get excited about the transports, uh, which means I think you still have to have a level of cautiousness in the market. Now, Level of cautiousness means different things for different people, uh, right? I just think you want to be a, a, aware of what's happening across the board in the marketplace. And, you know, back on April 7th, in our note to clients, we basically said a cautiously optimistic approach was in order as the breakthrough 2650 opened the door to 2800 to 2900 to the upside. Uh, so that's largely played out. And now we're chopping into resistance, right? And some choppy trading. So I think you want to pay attention to the intermarkets, what's going on. Taking a look at what's trending now. Friday's movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Freeport McMoran is a name you want to pay attention to if you're in the reflation camp. Uh, obviously, big commodity play. Up 8.5% following their earnings. IVZ rebounding after an atrocious report and uh, downside the previous day. Silicon Valley Bank, I think that uh, if you want to put your finger a little bit on the pulse of what's going on in kind of the, you know, tech community from a banking standpoint, you want to pay attention to SIVB up 7.6% following their print KMX, no real news up seven and a half percent and P H M Holty up 7.4% on the heels of their print. 
On the loser side of the board, Helmrich and Payne didn't see anything driving trading there. It'd be interesting to see how these energy stocks trade now again. Right? We talked about it last week. We'll talk about it again. Down 8% yes, uh, on Friday. <clears throat> uh, BA, Boeing down 6.3% as they announced that they're ending HAV with Embraer. Uh, a lot of back and forth, a lot of headlines there. Um, Boeing just, to me, I, I'm completely uninterested. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line extending the suspensions of some of their ships and their cruises. Takes 5.3% out of that stock lodging leisure kind of travel groups still under pressure las vegas sands down 4.74 percent irm didn't see anything company specific to drive that stock lower by 3.7 percent on the day so gold flashes a bearish divergence gold is one of my favorite trends out there it has been for a long time we've been bullish gold we remain bullish gold from a trend perspective if you read my market survival guide note that's been one of the enduring themes uh for me for months now okay uh, and that's borne out, right? Okay, ultimately, you know, if you're bullish gold and it's moving up into the right, uh, that means you're right. And we're above a rising 200-day moving average. Now, what I do see here is a negative divergence. Most recent high in gold, the commodity, unconfirmed by momentum as the RSI did not become overbought. Uh, and actually made a lower high relative to previous peaks. So that does catch my attention, right? So when I see that, you know, I don't necessarily want to chase gold. I actually made the exact same comment last week and we've essentially gone nowhere. So that's fine. Uh, gold is consolidating within the context of an uptrend and I'm watching the divergence. To me, uh, a break of kind of 1675 here would confirm that divergence and kind of shift me uh, off a of bullish stance in gold. But Remember on Friday, we highlighted GDX and the breakout there. Uh, that's still very much intact. Look at GDX here. Um, actually diverging with gold, right? You know, GDX making a new high as gold doesn't. So GDX looks compelling to me uh, in the interest of you know, full disclosure. I am long names like uh, gold, G-O-L-D, and uh, Franco Nevada uh, in my personal account as a play on this breakout in GDX. So just want to throw that out there. I do remain bullish gold from a trend perspective, but I'm mindful of the bearish divergence in the commodity itself. Speaking of consolidations, IEF, seven to 10 year treasury bond ETF continues to consolidate. I mean, I think, it, you know, listen, we had a parabolic move in treasuries to the upside, right? I mean, this went parabolic, okay? No two ways about it. Not the type of activity you expect to see in the treasuries, but we saw it, okay? So we need to now work that off. And that's what we're doing in my opinion here. We're consolidating above the 50-day moving average, above the 200-day moving average. You know, the indicators paint the same picture of a consolidation within the context of an uptrend as IEF is, you know, still above the breakout level relative to equities. Uh, so that's something I'm paying attention to closely. What I do find interesting is uh, that given the, Big rally in equities off the March 23rd low. Treasuries are not falling off a cliff, right? Rates are not ripping higher. Um, so that tells you, right, similar to what we saw in the transports, that there's still a level of kind of cautiousness out there in the market. And rightfully so. I, I think it's rightfully so. I think you want to honor your trends and pay attention to what's going on and continue to manage risk. And you should you know, basically be positioned in such a way as, you know, Mark Chaikin likes to say that allows you to sleep at night. I, I say oftentimes if you're getting up and the first thing you're doing is checking the futures and worried about what's going on in the futures market, you're probably have too much risk on for what is actually your risk tolerance. So just something to keep in mind there. Uh, and then finally crude moves back to the downside and that's in pre-market trading. We're down 15% in early trading here after going negative last week. Uh, crude down 15% pre-market trading. I think below 20, the bias is to the downside confirmed by momentum as the RSI is in bearish ranges. What's been interesting to me is that, this, that despite crude falling off a cliff, energy stocks have held in. So we'll see now with crude rolling over once again, if that does remain the case, we'll be watching XLE closely. It's going to wrap us up on a Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, take us for a spin chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. Have a great Monday, everyone.
Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.